it's hard to keep a good villain down in the gaming world. When an insidious adversary captures the hearts of gamers, it's no surprise they become a recurring enemy. Just look at Bowser, Dr. Robotnik, and M. Bison. No matter how many times we manage to beat these guys, they keep coming back for more. Even if we kill them off, they mightn't be done for good, and we're kind of glad they're not because they're pretty excellent. Although not everybody is recurring. Despite these particular scoundrels' solitary appearances, they've become infamous, influential, and iconic. Although it's uncertain whether these 10 villains will reappear in the future, nobody's gonna forget them anytime soon. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 awesome video game villains that only appeared once. Number 10, Arkham, Batman the Telltale Series. In Batman the Telltale series, Bruce Wayne is caught in a scandal after a conspiracy surrounding his parents goes public. Over time, the world's greatest detective learns this revelation is tied to a new villain called Arkham, who's hell-bent in destroying Bruce's reputation. Considering Batman's got a legion of iconic foes, it seemed originally kinda odd how the point-and-click adventure would decide to focus on a brand new baddie, especially one with such an unoriginal appearance and name. But what makes Arkham so interesting is how this criminal mastermind scheme is directed at Bruce Wayne, not Batman, making their rivalry more personal. Arkham is far more effective than most of Batman's rogues gallery too, since the masked supervillain swiftly turns Gotham against the playboy billionaire and causes irreversible damage to his personal life. Without giving the game away, it's a real shocker when Arkham's identity is revealed, since Bruce and the player truly trusted them. Learning about the sadistic killer's backstory is heartbreaking, since it becomes clear Arkham's resentment towards Bruce is understandable and somewhat justified. Despite being a well-written and memorable villain, Arkham hasn't appeared in any Batman property since. Number 9. Darth Malak, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic Though few Star Wars villains can match Darth Vader's complexity and badassery, Darth Malak comes pretty close. Serving as the central antagonist of my favourite RPG of all time, Knights of the Old Republic, the former apprentice of the malevolent Darth Revan is initially depicted as a one-dimensional baddie. Over time, it's evident that Malak is so much more than he seems. Around the halfway point, the diabolical Sith divulges how he tried to take Revan's place, causing his master to lose all memories. After that, Malik reveals the protagonist is Revan, which they were oblivious to up until that point. In that moment, our hero realizes they're responsible for molding Malik into what he is, instantly making the diabolical force wielder far more compelling. After the penny drops, Revan has more motivation to stop Malik than ever, since they must be redeemed for unleashing the great evil upon the cosmos. Alternatively, players can allow Malik to manipulate Revan back to the dark side, plunging the galaxy into a new era of chaos. Though KOTOR is superb from start to finish, nothing packs the same wallop as the moment when Darth Malik's past is finally unveiled. Number 8. The Transcendent One – Planescape Torment Torment follows an amnesiac immortal called the Nameless One who resides in a realm between realities called Sigil. On his journey, Nameless must uncover his true identity and the origin of his immortality. During the climax, Nameless is confronted with an otherworldly being called the Transcendent One. The cosmic entity reveals he's the personification of Nameless's mortality. The Transcendent One's power increases each time Nameless dies, allowing him to ascend to an almost godlike state. Even though Transcendent arrives very late to the party, the big reveal is something to behold. Players are sure to be wowed by the nebulous creature's awesome design as well as his fascinating backstory. But what makes the Transcendent One stand out is his booming voice. Every utterance of this grandiose foe is filled with intimidating gravitas, thanks to Tony J's magnificent vocal talents. With a voice like that, this guy could leave anybody quaking in their boots, even if he took the form of a kitten. The Transcendent One's appearance is brief, but the encounter is something that'll stay with players for a long time. Number 7. The Allied Master Computer – I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream In this adaptation of Harold Ellison's short story, the Allied Master Computer, or AM, has decimated the world, killing all but five members of humanity. Due to Am's boundless hatred and sadistic nature, the artificial intelligence concocts ethical dilemmas for the survivors to endlessly torture them. It's a bold claim, but there might not be a villain in video games that detests humans more than Am does. 
For a century, the evil supercomputer has forced his unwilling test subjects to take part in scenarios that reflect the worst of humanity, including murder, war, and genocide. For this reason, it's pretty much impossible to play I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream without getting supremely depressed. What makes the Allied Master Computer so scary is the fact that his form is inconceivable. Rather than looking like a conventional robot, the malevolent machine is comprised of circuits and wires that extend for millions of miles across the world. Even though Am has no true face, he is in every crevice of the earth and monitoring his slaves every move, constantly devising new ways to inflict unimaginable pain on them. Number 6. Haytham Kenway, Assassin's Creed 3 in Assassin's Creed 3, a Native American called Connor is left inconsolable after the sinister Templars kill everyone in his tribe. Apologies for not trying to say his original name. Learning his own father, Haytham Kenway, is the Grandmaster of the organization, Connor joins the Templars' sworn enemies, the Assassin Brotherhood. Due to Connor's conflict with his father, it'd be easy for Haytham to be depicted as a generic villain, especially since he often comes across as a pompous snob. But since the player actually takes control of the antagonist for the first few hours, they get to see the world from his eyes and understand where he's coming from. Though he became an arrogant fanatic, Haytham dreamed of unifying the Templars and Assassins, bringing an end to the war once and for all. Despite clashing ideologies, Haytham cares for Connor and genuinely believes his cause is the only way to bring about peace for both of them. Even when he has the opportunity to slay Connor, Haytham repeatedly attempts to reason with him. Though his holier-than-thou egotism is ever-present, Haytham Kenway is anything but a one-note baddie. In fact, he might very well be the best villain in the entire franchise. Number 5. Mike Tyson – Mike Tyson's Punch-Out Punch-Out has had plenty of iconic boxers over the years, including Bald Bull, King Hippo, and Donkey Kong. However, no opponent is as legendary or as terrifying as the final boss of the original, Mike Tyson. For many 80s gamers, Iron Mike was the first boss that truly felt unbeatable. Players won't last more than a few seconds against the Knockout King unless they've memorized all his movements and hit Tyson with pinpoint precision throughout the entire bout. This brawl left a permanent impression on the gaming community, despite the fact that many Punch-Out fans have never faced the former heavyweight champion. You see, Nintendo lost the licensing for Tyson's likeness, forcing them to swap the character out with another fighter called Mr. Dream. Since this was the version released in Europe, many Punch-Out owners there never got the chance to throw down with the baddest man on the planet. And yet this didn't hinder Tyson's reputation as one of the most brutally unfair bosses of all time. In a way, it's probably better Tyson never reappeared in the follow-ups since it had caused players to relive the many, many times the boxing legend wiped the floor with them in the original. At least I guess it felt realistic. Number 4. Andrew Ryan – Bioshock Considering Andrew Ryan is the main antagonist to Bioshock, the confrontation with the deranged industrialist could have been anticlimactic, especially since he only appears in person for three minutes. However, Ryan's presence is felt throughout the entire playthrough, thanks to the deluge of statues, paintings, videos, and voice recordings of him that are littered throughout the vast complex. After seeing Ryan's face and hearing his callous timber for hours on end, the silent protagonist Jack should feel like he already knows the eccentric magnate long before you've encountered him. Though this meeting is short, it's arguably the most memorable part of the game. Ryan reveals how he's been manipulating Jack from the beginning by using the subliminal phrase, would you kindly? Although this phrase has been heard throughout the main campaign, its significance isn't understood until this moment. To prove Jack has no control, Ryan utters the phrase, compelling the protagonist to pulverize him to death with a golf club. Though Jack was dead set on exacting his revenge on Andrew Ryan, murdering him is a hollow victory. Also, the fact that Ryan allowed himself to die in an excruciating manner just to prove a point is pretty ballsy. Number 3. SAX – Metroid Fusion Metroid Fusion opens with a mysterious parasite bonding with our heroine Samus Aran. This merge creates an evil duplicate of the galactic bounty hunter called SAX. 
After that, the devious doppelganger hunts Samus for the rest of the playthrough. Since this Terminator-like villain can't be injured until the final battle, Samus has no choice but to run or hide every time her malevolent twin draws near. For this reason, it's no surprise why Metroid Fusion was praised for its focus on tension, atmosphere, and scaring players out of their freaking mind. Even though SAX is arguably the creepiest villain in Metroid, she's never appeared again. That's a shame, especially since the franchise has repeatedly incorporated aspects of the character into the follow-ups. In the Metroid Prime sequel, Samus faces another evil twin called Dark Samus, who appears at specific intervals in a similar manner to SAX. The Emmy robots from Metroid Dread blatantly steal SAX's MO, since they're unkillable entities who constantly hunt Samus. Since the developers behind Metroid Dread keep creating enemies that are, ironically, clones of SAX, why don't they just bring her back? Number 2. Master Lee, Jade Empire In Jade Empire, the last remaining spirit monk is tasked with rescuing his mentor Master Lee from the clutches of the tyrannical emperor, Sun Hai. Lee is not just the spirit monk's teacher, but the closest thing he has to a father. That's why it's soul-destroying when Lee ultimately reveals he's the Emperor's brother. At first, it's difficult to believe Lee has any ties to the malevolent ruler since he always comes across as a warm and nurturing sage. But when he reveals he's slaughtered thousands and covets ultimate power, it's unmistakable that Lee is worse than Sun High ever was. It's not just the hero that feels betrayed though, it's also the player. They spent hours honing their skills and battling the Warlord's forces only to learn they in directly help the true villain achieve his goals. Just to add salt to the wound, Lee never intended to ask his pupil to join him. Instead, Lee makes it crystal clear he always planned to execute the spirit monk to further his schemes. Even after defeating Master Lee, it's likely players will still feel sore, knowing they fell for Lee's ploy, hook, line, and sinker. Number 1. Flowey, Undertale as soon as Chara's journey begins, they're introduced to an adorable flower called Flowey. Though Flowey initially acts like a mentor for Chara, the sentient plant quickly makes his malicious intent known, attempting to kill our hero. Despite making a solid impression, players probably didn't expect to see much from Flowey again, especially when they got bigger fish to fry. I mean, he's a little flower, how dangerous could he be? But in the climax, Flowey is revealed to be the overarching villain. The wicked creature also breaks the fourth wall, alerting the player he knows full well what they've done. Even after deleting the save file and starting a new one, Flowey will inform the player he's aware of all the despicable actions they may have performed. Although meta-references are nothing new, this works perfectly here, since it makes the player feel like they're not in control of their actions, especially when Flowey messes with the save files. More importantly, it makes Flowey seem like a formidable threat, since he's not bound by the game's rules. Though Flowey appears rotten to the core, following the true pacifist route will reveal his surprisingly deep and tragic backstory. Even though some villains have popped up in dozens of games, few are as thought-provoking, memorable, and original as Flowey, despite his one and only appearance.